What's going on guys? Welcome to Own The Chaos. My name is Brad, this is Christian, and this is the Entrepreneur Moment where we go uh, on video with you guys and just basically talk to you about what it is to be an entrepreneur, how to be successful, how to own your own business, and you know, really what you gotta go through to get there. And you know, we've talked about you know, failures, and we've talked about ideas, and, and, you know, and the whys, of why you wanna be an entrepreneur, and how, how it's really okay to go through failures. And today, we're just talking about like, what it really takes to be an entrepreneur and really to run your own successful business. I want to talk a little bit more about Christian's experiences as well because his business is taking care of businesses, you know, bringing a consultative uh, perspective on, you know, how to run, you know, primarily what his, his, his um, niche was, has been in has just been bars and restaurants. Um, you know, I'm a little bit of the wild card here with We Tree HQ, but nevertheless, the principles are the same. Um, but I think, you know, what we, where we want to take this is just what it really takes. You know, there's that whole glitz and glamour of the end result of being an entrepreneur, right? The, the, the money part of it, the material things, you know, the supercars, all that stuff. But what it takes to get to that point, if that's really what your end game is. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not as easy as maybe some people might make it out to be. We see on YouTube all the time, right? There's, there's people that have money or they go on vacations, they travel everywhere, but they had to work their tail off to really get to that point. And I think that's where uh, we are coming in to try to shed some light on what it really takes to be an entrepreneur. So what's going on, Christian? Nothing, I mean, I think this is an exciting topic, right? Because this is um, where I think people have the biggest misconceptions, right? They see the glamour of yeah. entrepreneurship oh, and, yeah. and when people step into it, it's this whole other world that they never realized existed. So if it's what you see is the glamour part, I don't know, what's your experience? I, I think that's maybe 5% of what <laughs> entrepreneurship actually is from my experience and then from the clients that I work with. Yeah, and I think that like, um, for those kind of people, like the people that you see that you know, the the misconception is is that they became successes overnight. You know, most of you know most of most people are like, oh, they just showed up that way. That's not the case at all. Um, you know, especially starting out when you start your own business. And I'm just speaking from personal experience. It's a 24/7 job. From the time that I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm working. There's there's no there's no breaks for me, uh, and there's no uh, you know, oh, okay, well I'll get to it when I can get to it. That doesn't happen. Uh, and, and maybe that's the trade-off of being an entrepreneur versus, versus working your regular nine to five. Nine to five is, is kind of safe, it's comfortable. Um, you don't have to worry about anything after you walk out those doors at the end of the day. Whereas myself, um, maybe we're just a glutton for punishment, but you know, uh, you know, I'm working from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, and it's, it's a grind. Um, you ha I literally have to tell myself that it's okay to like, Take, take a step away just for maybe even if it's a couple hours because I'm so worried about what if I don't get to this, what if I don't get to that? And you know, understanding that time management, understanding your mental health is important and stuff is all kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, so Christian, I kind of wanted to, to ask you, you know, I, I'm giving you my personal experiences, but what are your experiences with just dealing with other businesses and other clients that you've seen along the way about what it really takes to be an entrepreneur of a successful business? Well, so the, the, the common thread that I see through a lot of my clients is this idea of how unfair business is. You know, like I'm, I'm known as like a pretty intense person. Yeah. Um, it's kind of related to our, our video on the why. You know, you're gonna work a lot of hours. You're gonna commit blood, sweat, and tears. You're the first one in, last one out. It can't just be about money if that's if 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 you're gonna be successful. Um, but when I look at people, um, I had a I had a conversation with one of my clients in North Carolina, and one of the things that we talked about a lot was how unfair business was, and. The same rules don't apply to business owners. So the one shift entrepreneurs need to make when you start your business, the first thing you need to make is, everything I thought and knew about business from my nine to five, throw it out the window, right? Like nobody's gonna feel bad for you, nobody's gonna check in on you, all that other stuff. Right. And, and understand that 
you're held to a higher standard. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs struggle is because nobody cares about them. <laughs> you have to care about your people. If you're lucky enough to have employees, you have to care about your clients. You have to care about, nobody cares about you. Right. Hopefully you have enough money that you can hire somebody like me to coach you. But you know, the whole adage, like it's lonely at the top. If you're there on your own trying to figure things out, which most entrepreneurs are at the beginning, like, you have a situation that's just unfair and you're kind of like, you're, you're just, it sucks. Right. And so that's probably the most jarring situation, the most jarring piece of entrepreneurship is like, I don't have anybody to check me. If I do my work, like the, the input, the, the output is directly reflective of the input. And so whatever you put in, you get out. Nobody's gonna wake you up. Nobody's gonna call you, whatever. So all that stuff um, is a challenge for people as they become entrepreneurs. And I think it's really important for people to get real and understand that like, you've got to create your own framework and you've got to hold yourself accountable. And oftentimes visionary, somebody with that great idea doesn't really have that skill set that's like the discipline, yeah. that's the structure. So that causes challenges. Would you say that's probably what makes, makes or breaks a business is like, you know, because you, you basically have to have that discipline, right? That self accountability, mm -hmm. uh, because there's nobody there to keep you accountable. But for, I mean, for me, for, I'm fortunate enough to have a partner in my business to where I'm not necessarily all alone, um, while it still feels lonely sometimes. But like, um, you know, would you say that that, that probably could you know, could potentially be the make or break moment for anybody who's looking to start a business? Is that like, understanding and having that self-awareness and that self-discipline to make sure that you're staying on top of yourself. Yeah, it's important to stay on top of everybody else, but having that self-check every now and then yeah. I think is probably really important too. Well, the basic level, the awareness, like what you said, the awareness is the most important. And I think the most successful managers, owners have great awareness yeah. because it's okay if you don't have certain things, but it's not okay if you're not aware of it. Yeah. Because if you're aware, you can fix it, you can address it. So you have options. Most visionaries, most people with a great idea, and there's a million ideas out there. If you're an entrepreneur, that doesn't mean you have to be a visionary. Right. Most visionaries, a lot of them aren't good at execution because they spend time in the clouds and the big picture. But then when it's time to execute and do the gritty work, a lot of them can't do it. So that's when you may need a partner. Or, you know, you find somebody who complements your skill set presents a whole different set of challenges, but that's why you find a lot of partnerships that have complementary skills. Very rarely do you start out as an entrepreneur with all of them at the beginning. Yeah, well, and I think that it's very rare that you got it all figured out, right? Yeah, I, mean, I don't yeah, think right. I don't think anybody's got it all figured out, but yeah, I think just having that, and honestly, you know, I've been very fortunate to have a partner in my business that, um, we just complement each other very well. I think that you probably could speak to this too. It's just like, there's plenty of business partners that like they just butt heads all the time. Maybe they're the yeah. same exact person, but me and Jake, it's like, you know, he's completely opposite of me. And sometimes we, we get in little risks, but we've never really gotten into like a knock them out, drag down type of thing because we just talk everything out. I mean, we talk every single day, which is obviously also important, but we get each other, we, we're able to hold each other accountable. So like, just from my own experiences, if I had to, to, you know, give any advice, my advice would be to at least, if you don't want a business partner, at least have somebody in your corner that can help hold you accountable and maybe provide you that self-awareness if you know that you need help with that. Yeah, I mean, you have a couple options. So you're gonna have a, um, I encourage everybody to get a mentor. I encourage everybody to have a mentor. Um, in general, but a mentor can help with that to hold you accountable. You could have a board of directors, right? And if you don't have money up front, usually this is the, these are the closest people to you that believe in you. You could consider um, offering an equity exchange because cash flow is most important. You know, when you start out as a young business, like you want to maintain cash flow. So like equity is an option potentially, even giving somebody a couple percentage points, they're gonna be people that believe in you. Right. So it's it's just gonna be icing on the cake. But 
somebody there that either holds you accountable or if it's a partner that can support you and to move it forward, um, that's dangerous too. And I mean, we should talk about that in future episodes, but we really should talk about like, how do you find the right partner? Because I have seen some tragic <laughs> situations sure. with partnerships that like, they haven't really looked at the compatibility as business people. So, you know, that, that's, that shift is always challenging for, for entrepreneurs because once you, once you decide to start, you have now entered into like an IndyCar race and yeah. it's not gonna stop, it's only gonna continue. And so what you're gonna find is like, things are gonna start falling off and whether it's, you know, your personal development, whether it's other pieces of your business, as you grow, they're gonna be more challenging to like, to grow and develop. Um, and oftentimes you could grow too fast and you haven't have a, a strong foundation in place. And so that's sort of the catch 22 of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and I think we could touch on it a little bit. I mean, this, this episode is all about like what it's like to be an entrepreneur and do you have what it takes. So like understanding that, you know, understanding that if you have a partner or, or if you're working in a, uh, an LLC with a partnership, you know, for me, and Jake and I talk about this all the time, he, my, my partner Jake, um, that we're, we're kind of like in an actual, it's that we're not that far from an intimate relationship, that because we communicate with each other every day and we go through the same similar types of arguments that couples would make, um, that it's, it's you're, you're invested in that person, and so understanding that part of it too is that they're, they're, you guys are going, you're on the same team, but just like any other, you know, uh, couple would be on the same team. You're gonna go through those, um, you know, differences uh, and stuff like that. So just really kind of like understanding uh, that you've got somebody in your corner that's gonna help you uh, maybe when you're when you're slacking a little bit. And I hate the fact that like, you know, partnerships and even in relationships really, uh, that it's always 50-50 because it's not. You know, maybe you're going through something in your life that you just can't be there for everything that you got to be there for. So your partner's there to, to help pick up some of that slack, and vice versa. There's always going to be that that influx here and there. Maybe you're stronger in this area than than this person is, and it's never it's never like a 50-50 relationship uh, to really make it successful. So I just wanted to touch on that just very briefly because I think it does fall in line with like what it takes to be a true entrepreneur if you're not looking to do it all on your own. Because honestly. I think you're just setting yourself up for failure if you do try to do it all on your own. I really like the fact that like you're talking about mentorships and, 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 and having a mentor in your corner. I don't have it all figured out. Just because I have a successful business doesn't mean that I stop learning. Yeah. I'm actually in, actively in a YouTube course where I'm learning how to like communicate with you guys better on camera and um, going through that right now and I'm learning so much with that from pe other people that have been successful before me so that I can work on things and connect better with you guys and continue to inspire in the ways that I do. Yeah, I, I, I would encourage entrepreneurs to treat themselves as a client. You know, like I, I have, let's say I have five clients at any given time. Well, I have space for six, but that sixth is me. And so investing in the client, checking in with the client, it sounds kind of cheesy, but like you're the first thing that goes. Right. When things get busy, your well-being is the first thing that goes, but it's the most important thing. And so from a business perspective, you have to make sure you're reinvesting in yourself. You're focusing on yourself. You're making yourself better because that's only gonna help your business. That's only gonna help your company, your clients, and the people you work with, your partners. And so I don't, like, it's, it's funny because it's so obvious, but it happens all the time. Yep. You get busy, you start seeing a little bit of success, and your, whether it's your physical health, your mental health, whether it's actual pieces of your business that fall by the wayside, that's the most challenging time. So I would encourage anybody to start a business, build in time where you, you work on your business, non-negotiable. So for me, Friday evenings, I work on my business, right? And then I have certain times of the day where like five to seven, I'll try to work on my business. So. The non-negotiable for me is Friday. I always know on Friday that'll happen. My weekends, I never, I try not to do client work, but like that's dedicated to my business. I'm working seven days a week, 24 right. hours more or less. I do it because I enjoy it. It doesn't feel like work, but that time invested in your business is gonna reap exponential rewards oh, yeah. to oh your company. Gosh. 
One hundred percent. And so, and I, and I really like that too because I've worked harder than I ever have in my entire life. Yeah. But I still love it. Like I, I, I feel more fulfilled than I have in. Do ever you feel like you have more energy? Like I feel like I have more energy sometimes, and I'm working. I think sometimes I do, and then there's yeah. other times where I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just I'm tired. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because it's just. You know, when I worked a nine to five, and even in my most current, my, my most recent job, the last job I left, um, I made an impact. Yeah. And um, I made an impact and it went unrecognized. You know, and I think that's what a lot of people that work a nine to five run into. Like, they, they make an impact, they do a lot of work, they make changes um, that really make that business run better. And that's what I did, um, but then it went unrecognized. Uh, and so, um, I think, that like for, for me right now because I, while I can't just recognize myself, I think the result of my hard work that I can see every day is so much more impactful. And so it's not necessarily like, oh yeah, I'm like just rolling in cash, but it's the, the little things every day that I know that I'm making an impact that really kind of makes me keep going and what really makes me ultimately happy and fulfilled in everything in every every day that I, that I do this I think the biggest I'm, act, I'm probably saying everything's the biggest thing but but like one of the biggest mistakes people make is to act like their situation is unique and yeah. that their their situations are unique to their business or to them this has been happening time and time again like what we're experiencing in business whether it's hospitality what's whether, whether it's the investing space like Fundamentally, business is very basic. And to think that you're the only person that has experienced something is foolish, right? Even if a product doesn't exist, it's foolish. So if, if people have experienced this before, then the smart ones go reach out to those people and go learn from them. And so, you know, beyond the mentorships, all that stuff, like I don't, there are so many resources out there that people are just unaware of that want you to serve, like want you to succeed. Like yeah. the, 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 our nation is built on small business, right? right? Like right. hopefully the government wants you to succeed and there's things in place to do that and, and really exhausting every resource you have. I would encourage people you need know, to do it all, mentorship, but then there's also small business development centers that are in every single major city that are free resources, free trainings. There's the um, Beyond the Small Business Development Center, their Chamber of Commerce is, right? They do pitch competitions, yep. like they, they network. Network with people, get a community together for people that are experiencing the same things you're experiencing because it's just gonna expedite your growth yeah. and it, you're gonna avoid a ton of mistakes if you talk to people that have been there before. Yeah, I, and I, I agree with that. I mean, and, I, and I've, I've lived through that, you know, but I think, you know, it goes back to the whole self-awareness thing. I made myself aware of like, and Jake and I had this conversation. It was like, we're not growing. You know, yeah. we're six months into this business and it's like, it's been a fun ride and now we're at a flat line right now. And it's like, maybe we need some help. And it, and it, it took, it was a tough pill to swallow there for a little while, but I mean, understanding that we needed that and, and reaching out to, Christian, and, and that was the other thing, like we reached out to a whole pool of people before we, we settled with Christian, but. Did you um, really, or did you just tell me that? No, we really did. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you competing with oh, it was <laughs> it was it was rough. Jake, Jake had some real winners there. Love you, buddy. Being an entrepreneur and what it takes is, I mean, all the cliche stuff, right? Determination, uh, you know, hard work, smart work. You know, I think that's really important too, that sometimes just because you're working your, your ass off doesn't mean that you're getting anywhere. So working smarter definitely plays an impact as well. But like, there's a certain sense of loneliness and, I, and we didn't really touch on this a whole lot, but I think just making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Just because it is a 24 seven job doesn't mean that you can't go do things. You know, I've, I've been able to go away. Um, I, I've unfortunately had to take work with me uh, but I still have people in place like Christian and Jake to be like, hey, listen, I need to take some time away. Um, call me if you need me, I'll still be here, but I just need to a little bit of R&R &R just to recharge myself. Because sometimes when that happens, you come back and you've got some awesome ideas. You know, giving yourself that mental health break is super important. 
Um, so that's just part of it. You know, yeah, it, it really takes a lot of hard work and it's a 24 seven job, but giving yourself that, that time to really kind of just recharge and physically taking care of yourself. I find myself sometimes it's been eight hours and I haven't moved from my seat. So like making sure that you get up, all yeah. that good stuff is um, really important. When it, and again, that's another problem, a misconception. Like I'm kind of tongue in cheek saying 24 seven, but you will work a lot, but it doesn't, if you're working 24 seven at 50%, why don't you just work the half the time at 100%? Right. And you gotta be able to forgive yourself and be okay with taking time off, and especially with partnership. If you're in a partnership, don't look to that other person and try to compare yourself to that other person. Yeah. Your, your metrics for success should be based on yourself, not on other people, because you're talking about different roles, different different strategies. Um, and so with that said, like, if, you need a day off, take a day off. Right. You know, like it, it's, when you're gonna lose in this game, if you lose in this game, it's most likely gonna be something in your head. You're gonna so burn out. Gonna, yeah, it's so. It's gonna burn out. What, what we found is, you know, and this, I, I can't take claim to this saying, but like success is usually on the other side of failure, right? When people give up, yeah. that point which, which they give up, it was probably really close to success. They just didn't push through. And so for, for you to be able to, not be in your head, you to be able to be strategic, you know, like when you have an idea, run with it, give all your energy, be intense, but like, if you need a break, take a break, yeah. and don't feel guilty and don't get in your own head, like just take the break, I'll take a whole day off and I'll be okay with it, I'll be lazy, I'll be on the couch, but you know what, that next day, I'm gonna come back even stronger and I'm gonna be recharged. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, I don't know, it, it, it's super important. I mean, I don't know how many times, I mean, that you hear stories of like people that just burn out and you're here watching me on YouTube. There are YouTubers now that are burning out because they feel like yeah. they just gotta keep grinding and putting putting content out and they work themselves up over it. And then they also take, you know, we're in the world of social media where they take everything, you know, comments and all that thing to heart. So like understanding that you just need to take that with a grain of salt and let it roll off of you too. And just taking care of yourself, that mental health is super important. And ultimately really, I think almost we keep saying number one, but really your mental health is, if you don't have that, you know, you don't have your business anymore. So definitely just taking care of yourself is, is gonna be, be that. Do you have anything else that you think that we haven't touched on as far as like what it takes to really be an entrepreneur? Well, I've never mentioned this, but my big message to my, my clients is progress, not perfection, right? Like moving forward. We yeah. talked about what success means. Like I'm comparing, I just wanna keep moving forward, um, but, you know, it ties into everything. When we talk about failure, like, just focus on continuing to make progress. Don't beat yourself up if it's not perfect. Don't beat yourself up if it's not right. Just make sure that you commit to continuing to get better every day. And you've talked about this, enjoying that process. Like, enjoying, like, when I see, a, when I see something that's not right or that didn't work, I'm excited because it's an opportunity to get better and to learn. Yeah, 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 not focusing on the end result, focusing on the here and now. Yeah. and embracing the, the small wins here and there. I think, I mean, enjoy it, you know? Like, don't be beat, beat up yourself because you're not where you're, you wanna be today. Just take it, take what you're learning today and really just embrace that. I think that's really ultimately what makes, makes you happy as an entrepreneur. Knowing that you've had those little wins that you've been able to string together um, just gets a snowball, you know, effect rolling, so. Yeah, yeah and I, I think that, you know, when we, when we said, do you have what it takes, the reality is everybody has what it takes, right? But you just gotta be able to understand yourself and how you work in the formula for you and just be able to commit to that. You know, yes, you do have what it takes. We all have what it takes, but it takes time. <laughs> it takes time. I mean, how can I follow up after that? So with that, guys, I think we'll end it there. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the third video that we've put out. Um, and just give us some feedback. Put some comments down in, down below this video and let us know what you think. Do you have it, what it takes to be an entrepreneur? Are you one? We wanna hear from you. Leave some comments down below and, or maybe you're not 
you're not there yet and you're worried about being an entrepreneur, there's something that you've wanted to do, but you're just not ready to take that leap. We want to hear from you so that we maybe can help you in some sort of way. And if there's other entrepreneurs out there that have gone through these same types of issues, was there something that we didn't touch on? I want to hear from you all, all down there and below in the comments. And also, of course, give this a like and a, and a subscription to help further support this channel and, and really kind of get on board with what it is that we're trying to do, which is inspiring other people to take that leap and to really um, understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, my name is Brad, this is Christian. Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next week. What's going on guys? It's Brad from We Trade HQ <laughs> on the chaos. This is Christian and this is an entrepreneur moment where we go, uh, oh sh <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to In the Chaos. Why did I say it like that?